Hello YouTube, this is Idino, and I am uh, just showing off my uh, new 3D printer. Well, not new. Um, it's a couple months old, but uh, I haven't really had a chance to show it off yet, so I figured I would. Um, running way low on filament, but uh, it should last me a few more weeks until I can buy some more. Um, this is a Prusa i3 printer. Uh, it's more actually an iterative design of the Prusa i3. It's uh, actually called the i3X. Uh, designed by a, uh, I forget the name of the person, I, it's X is Inc or something like that, I don't know, but um, it's a fun little printer, uh, very minimalistic design, there's just not a lot to it, mostly just printed parts and then vitamin parts like these uh, rods and backplate and everything. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a nice printer, I, I really enjoy it, I mean, I put a couple hundred dollars into it, um, they can get pretty expensive when they break down, but uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, some of the stuff I've done to it to upgrade the initial buy is uh, this plate down here is uh, some tempered glass that I got from a company nearby. Um, just ordered an 8 inch by 8 inch uh, by quarter inch thick sheet of glass with uh, rounded edges so I don't cut myself. Um, I got this power supply for like 30 bucks, modified it so the uh, cables going out of it were more easily uh, maintained. There's actually only one cable coming out of it instead of the huge mess that was normally there. I ended up cutting and then uh, just capping all the other wires. Um, what else we got here? I got this right here, this hot end. Um, this is an E3D all metal hot end. This base right here is uh, about 240 degrees Celsius right now. Meanwhile, this thing right here, I can barely feel the warmth. In fact, most of the warmth is coming off of the uh, heated build plate right here. Um, it's about maybe 30 degrees Celsius at most, uh, which is still warm, but nothing nothing too bad. Um, so this this little aluminum thing right here um, is solid milled aluminum, amazing. And then back here you've got a um, a fan that comes around the back that's constantly blowing on that, cooling it down. Um, other than that, just the uh, uh, I guess filament spool holder, which works fantastically. It was 25 bucks with all the parts doesn't move around at all which is useful and it uh, maintains the ability to uh, oh, a picture there maintains the ability to um, I guess spool properly these are the prints that I'm getting out of it right now um, oh, shit. Second. it's uh, this is a penny ballista um, not the best quality I think a lot of that actually has to do with the stability of the platform that's on right now the uh, Z wobble right there that you can see. Um, but other than that, I mean, it, it does really good work. It's uh, solid. The parts, you know, there's barely any give to them. There's no. There's a little bit of warping on the edges right here, you can see, and then right there is a little bit, not as much. Um, and I think that's just because I haven't figured out a good way to apply the adhesive yet. What I'm using is actually just glue stick um, to adhere, like big, to get it to to adhere to the plate. Um, and then I'm actually printing off the uh, the part that holds the penny in here uh, right now. Um, it's a just a basically a small slot thing, which is pretty cool. So that should be done fairly quick. Um, you can see the, the Greg's all uh, plastic extruder, which is cool. It's uh, almost 100% printed except for, of course, the motor and the bolts holding it together. Um, there's actually no other parts inside that besides plastic parts, which is cool. All the, in fact, all the blue parts on this printer are all printed on another printer, which is really cool. You can see the, uh, the I guess, quality, uh, lack thereof on it. And you can see it, the platform is a little bit unstable to where it's moving. I'm not moving that much, but that thing is moving like crazy. So I have to find another way to kind of secure that so it's not so um, dubstep wobbly. So um, anyway, we've got, uh, this is the nice spaghetti mess that I've got in the back. Um, very, very well organized. I initially thought I might be able to go in and uh, get the whole thing nice and organized and neat so the wires weren't like, hanging everywhere, and then I just said, screw it, let's make it so none of the wires are getting destroyed and uh, leave it at that, because that is just a lost cause. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I honestly could watch this thing run for hours. It's such a blast. Um, I still haven't finished calibrating it. I, I've been working on it pretty extensively, but it's one of those things where you uh, start working on something and, you know, real life kind of intervenes. So.
So, but um, this seems actually getting going on pretty quick. Let's uh, see how much money we got here. Here's my uh, display. Let's go to you. So we've got about five more minutes. Cool. And then uh, this is the software that I'm using right now. I actually I try to <coughs> excuse me. I try not to use this just because it's. Uh, I don't like the slicing software that's included in it. I actually prefer uh, the way that Slicer and uh, Repetier Host you uh, you know print. Um, but I do uh, I do have to say that I like the way the software works um, on the software side of things. Uh, for instance, this right here is the shows the slicing model, which is pretty cool. The other ones don't really do this. Um, well, I guess they do, but I just haven't really figured out how to do that. But this one, you know, you can get in here and sh it shows all the lines and everything. Um, and you can scroll basically by layer, and it's nice and quick, which I which I like. But uh, there you can see basically how it uh, builds the model, which is cool. And then um, what else we got? We got overhang. This I guess just shows any parts that are overhanging without supports. Um, none of them really that big of a concern for me. Um, it should be able to do these just fine. In fact, let's go ahead and take a look at it and see if we can get in there. And it looks like it did a good job there. No major issue. Um, the big thing is that uh, inside curve, which I don't know how well that's going to do. Oh, that doesn't shit. Sorry, guys. I'm using, with my, I'm using my cell phone. I had a, um, a camera that I was going to use, but it died. So, you know, that's uh, how it goes, I guess. Um, let's see here, what else do I have printed here? I've got this right here, which is a Christmas ornament, and then I uh, gave it an acetone vapor bath. I didn't get a chance to do it for very long because the heat source I was using got too hot, and it actually started bubbling, which if you look close enough, you can kind of see there. Uh, let's do that there. Okay, so you can kind of see it, um, the, the bubbling effect that happened. I, I like it because it makes it look, I don't know, scaly, I guess, but um, it scared the crap out of me when it happened, so I just kind of gave up on it. Um, what else? I've got this right here. This is a project that I'm doing for a friend. This right here is a printed ear cup for a uh, Grotto headphone. I'm not uh, too familiar with the brand, but basically these ear cups are uh, remove, uh, removable and replaceable with different designs. And uh, basically, the I guess the idea of it is that it's supposed to um, produce different and or better sounds. Uh, deeper bass, uh, higher highs, mids, clear, everything, I guess, I don't know, uh, better reverberation, um, more open sounds, more closed sounds, whichever your preference is, I guess, but uh, pretty cool design. Um, I, uh, he, he showed it off to me at work a few weeks ago, or I guess a few days ago, and um, it was really cool. So this is the Prestige Series SR80, and this is basically a copycat cut that I made. Um, did not realize uh, some of the design specifications were a little bit different. And I mean, you can see the, uh, the quality. This was actually used, uh, printed with Slicer. I like the uh, quality of this much better. Um, it's much smoother, uh, straighter. It is a little bit oblong, so I need to fix the uh, firmware for this thing. Um, that is the major downside with calibration, is that there are no set firmwares for these things, because, of course, I put this thing together, I built the entire thing, so I don't get the luxury of being able to go on a website and saying, I have this model printer, please give me the software for it. Um, I had to go in and configure that myself. I mean, of course, there it's it's not like I'm writing this line by line. I still have to, I mean, there is still software for that, but I'm using the, uh, the Marlin software, which is uh, really nice. But um, it had a lot of stuff that I had to do. Um, numbers changing, uh, doing a lot of math, stuff like that, but... I, don't know, I really like it, and uh, so we'll see what uh, what becomes of that. But um, yeah, I, uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and end this video about ten minutes in. Um, I, I really want to see this thing finish actually, so let's just go ahead and see what happens. Um, it's getting there. It looks like it already finished the bridging. Oh, it's almost done. Yep, it's capping off the end. It'll do this about five times. Done. 
Now, the other thing I'm contemplating doing is when I cancel the print, I really shouldn't have done this, but this thing right here, and actually the reason I canceled is because that thing failed. It was leaving just a giant mess of spaghetti, which you can see right there, everywhere, and uh, was getting clogged up in, in this thing. And I honestly probably could have cleared it away and, and left it to finish printing this because everything else was done. Um, it basically would have just wasted a little bit of material on finishing up that and then uh, would have finished this thing. This thing you can see, there's still a little bit of a honeycomb pattern there. But um, what happened was I was stupid and did not think about that. So I ended up getting a, um, a half finished, I guess more than half, and then probably two thirds finished. Oh, it's on. Two thirds finished. Um, and it's filming. Neat. Anyway, two thirds finished, uh, I guess, base, which is still usable. Um, I just have to, I guess, glue the uh, supports for the rubber band in. Let's go ahead and see if we can remove this thing without damaging it. Oh, it's hot. Yep, material is still very hot, so... Let's go ahead and see if we can just scrape this bad boy off. There we go. Oh, it. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm using hot glue to uh, get this thing... Not Hot glue, sorry. Um, oh yeah, I don't, I do not like this software for what, it, for the way it prints. Its quality is, eh. But um, whatever, it was quick and it allowed me to um, do some modifications that I couldn't do with the other software. So I used it and we just clean it up a little bit here. Sorry. Okay, so this is the part. Uh, it's got a slot for a penny right there, and. That thing right there sits in the track of this right here and just slides like so. In there. So, um, I think I'm going to go ahead and end the video. Like I said uh, a minute ago, uh, 12 minutes. Um, if you like the video, please comment, rate, and subscribe. Um, I've got other videos going up too soon. I've got my uh, Stanley Parable videos that I'm continuing. And I'm continuing, I'm actually starting up something uh, with my brother called Rust, if you guys have ever heard of it. It's a new game, it's an alpha, but it is a lot of fun. We played it for a couple hours the other day, I actually recorded video, but as it turns out, I did not record audio, so that had to kind of be scrapped. I don't like doing voiceover. So, anyway, um, I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next week.